What's going on gamers, the Red Dragon, and we are taking a look at Battlefield 3 Conquest Domovon Peak. Uh, so, you'll see that I am an engineer. We are uh, I'm repairing the tank for my buddy Mojo, and I'm going to hop in here. Right now, it's not looking so good for our team. You'll notice at the uh, ticket count on the left side of the screen, uh, our team is, is pushed uh, pretty far back. And uh, we got pushed out of the tunnel by an enemy tank. Uh, Mojo was able to take him out. And now we're going to hop in the tank and try to see if we can push in and take this back. The tank is the most important tool and weapon on this map, period. And so um, a tank can make all the difference in the world. It can really turn around the game. And uh, what you'll see is that you notice how enemies are popping up on the map right here. That's because Mojo has proximity scan on. So proximity scan is like a motion sensor on your tank. It's constantly sending out beacons or waves or whatever. And so it spots enemies for you. So you don't actually have to see them. It automatically shows up. So if you are playing on this particular map, it's a great tool to have on your tank. Also, I could think of a good map would be Tehran Highway. It's probably uh, you know a few more where it would really come in handy. But what I really want to stress is depending on the map, the game type, really depends on you know what kind of customizations and specializations you want to have on your vehicles or your soldier, whatever. So proximity scan works really good in close quarter combat. Uh, this is a level where enemies can be right beside you and you may not know it because of the walls uh, that are all around. Uh, there's lots of little crooks and grannies and little hiding spots where enemies can be so proximity scan is great now what if you were playing on a map like Caspian border or um, a, a map where it's pretty wide open there's a lot of space and um, there's not a lot of enemies that that's going to be up close beside you in that instance you would not want to have proximity scan it would be a waste pretty much um, so be sure that depending on the map the environment uh, think about what's going to give you the most advantage on that particular layout as far as your kits go and that's going to really help uh, your game and give you the best chance possible to, to do the best you can in a particular map or a level or whatever um, so the proximity scan it doesn't have a very large radius uh, but it has a good enough radius so if somebody's going to try to sneak up on you and play C4 or something like that uh, you're going to be able to catch those people. So let's talk about the overall, you know, um, conquest on Domovon Peak. So we talked about B is the most important. You'll see that we we pushed in. We tried to grab B. Look at all the people over there. I couldn't take down any of them. It's pretty sad. Uh, but um, if you if you're in a position, let's say that you're on the flip side of this. Let's say that you're you're the enemy team right now and you've only got one base and the other team has, has pushed you back. Um, one of the best tools that you can use that uh, a lot of people don't think of is the chopper. Now a lot of people grab the chopper and they automatically go for the enemy chopper and then it's like, well, there's nothing else to do. And I, I think that's pretty sad because I think the chopper is also a really good tool in order to turn this particular map around because what you can do is if you're in a situation where you're stuck, you, you can't get out, you can't bust through, and you can't take B maybe, then what you can do is um, grab the chopper, grab your buddies, uh, and fly over the mountain to the other side and drop your friendlies off in order to take the enemy base. And once again, as I've talked about in, uh, in one of the previous videos, going and taking the enemy base is almost just as good as taking the main base because what will happen is the people will end up leaving the main base to try to go back to capture their original spot and in that process you're lowering the defense for that big you know fortitude or fortress whatever they have defending the main primary base that you want to take which in this case is B now if they don't go back for the original base then that's good too because in conquest as long as you have the majority of the flags the other team's ticket count is going to drain. A lot of people have asked me, uh, you know, you know, tips on conquest, and that I mean that's really the only thing you really need to know. 
have the majority of the flags because if you do, the tickets are gonna drain. A lot of times, we Battlefield players, we take it for granted that we've been playing Battlefield so long and we forget that Conquest, you know, isn't a game type that's involved uh, in, in a lot of different other games. So a lot of people aren't really familiar about how exactly it works and what's the point and why you would need to have flags. I think you just grab them for a spawn point. Uh, so that's why sometimes I'll go over, you know, some very basic stuff and so I'm just letting you guys know uh, how that works. Um, but yeah, sneaking, sneaking behind the enemy and using that chopper as a uh, scout really helps you out. Notice what I did right there. Uh, we had an enemy tank. Um, we were facing, facing off. I turned my uh, vehicle to look at the very back of the tank because that's where I wanted to exit. If you watched the previous video that I just did yesterday about repairing, you'll know why. Because wherever you are looking depends on where you will exit. So you never want to exit you know, while you're looking at an enemy because that means you're going to be placed out there right in front of the enemy. Uh, so that's going to make a big uh, difference for you and really help you out and stay alive a lot longer because nothing, you know, is more terrible than jumping out of a vehicle to try to repair it and getting killed instantly. So always make sure that uh, you're looking in the direction that is the safest whenever you want to exit a vehicle. Um, but... Um, one other thing that I'm, I'll mention, a lot of people have been asking, if you look at the um, at my squad list, you'll see that Mojo has a little symbol, a little explos explosion, explosion symbol beside his name, and a lot of people have been asking, why do some people have different symbols beside their names, and how do you get that? What that means is that those are the squad um customizations that they have on or specializations so he has on squad explosives right now which increases the amount of rockets ammunition that you have and that goes for the entire squad you can get squad sprint um, so you'll see that uh, later on in, in videos that we'll be doing where you know me and my teammates we all have you know squad abilities unlocked um, you'll see us all running with different um, squad kits that relate to everybody in the squad. So you can really be strategic and and, um, and really uh, help out your entire squad by placing these on, by looking and seeing what your other teammates have on. And if, if your teammate has a squad sprint on, there's no reason for you to have sprint on. So you can go ahead and you can change your specialization, pick something else out and, and build up those kits and specializations where it's going to give you the most benefit and you know if you had a full team of uh, four uh, who all have different squad abilities I mean that really pumps you up maybe you could have suppression on you can have extra explosives you can have extra sprint and you can have all of those just by working as a squad so that's another reason why you want to find good teammates good squad mates and friends to play with because uh, eventually, once you all get ranked up and you unlock more things, it's really going to help out your entire game and uh, really beef your soldier up to give you a, a big advantage. You'll see right here, uh, Mojo, he's uh, kind of using that uh, crate right there as almost like a barrier to keep the enemy tank from being able to get a good view on him. Of course, whenever you are shooting at an enemy tank, always try to make sure that you are uh, shooting at the side of the tank if you can or at the back especially is, is really good uh, the front is the uh, most armored part of the tank so you never want to fire directly at the front of the tank because uh, it's going to take a lot longer in order to take that down but uh, with Dom Damavon Peak um, like I said B is the most important you have a tank running in here that's got proximity skin you can really clean up and hold down this entire area basically by yourself. Uh, of course, always be mindful and watch out for mines. We're gonna go ahead and skip forward a little bit uh, because the rest of it was kind of, you know, just kind of the same stuff. But we were able to come back from a pretty large uh, margin of being down. You see me and Mojo leading the team, and all these ribbons and things that we'll pick up ended up getting, I believe, like over 7,000 points just for that one uh, map. And we were able to come back, secure the victory. And so uh, it's a pretty good game, I think. All right, guys, hope that uh, helped you out. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, commentary. If you did, please comment, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Be sure to 
uh, you know, check out battlestrats.com if you want more uh, tips, tricks, hints, and teammates to play with.